Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick start this video real quick discussing AMD's FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution. You guys know what this is by now. It is AMD's competitor to NVIDIA's DLSS technology and it's coming along rather nicely from what I understand. But yeah, the most important thing is this is going to launch next month. So full credit to Cortex for this. He leaked it in a video and a couple of uh, people actually messaged me asking whether this was correct. Uh, he leaked this yesterday, so I did a bit of due diligence and reached out to a couple of my sources and they have told me that yes, Cortex's information is correct. I also did a bit more digging to find out if I could, well, add anything else to what I've said previously regarding image quality and stuff, and no, Basically, I'm told that it's really good image quality. Again, I've leaked this stuff previously and performance is, quote, really good, end quote, from one source. Um, and another one said, yeah, nothing's really changed compared to what we've said previously. Now, I've been hearing is up to 200% performance increase. However, I don't have any metrics to exactly how they work that out, like what resolution it's upsampling from and to, whether that's average or best performance. So yeah, I would probably stick an asterisk on there and probably not be quite as optimistic. But even so, even if it's like, you know, 70% performance increase, for example, that is still really good. Again, that's according to my information. I'll link Cortex's video in the description. Another thing that I find really interesting about this is to what I understand anyway, it is going to work on the older, um, Radeon architectures such as RDNA 1 and it's definitely a very different approach to what let's say NVIDIA have done with their machine learning tech and I think that this is going to mean a very fundamental divergence in strategy for how AMD are pushing this to developers. What's really fantastic is Cortex has also provided us a bit more insight into how this works and it seems to match very closely with what I've leaked previously which is awesome because well yeah um, that means it's more likely to be true. Uh, obviously, if more people are saying the same thing. So according to him, he states that FSR won't require training. I'm, yeah, definitely on board with that train. Uh, from the beginning, I, I said that I, I was very skeptical it would use training and inference, and this does seem to be the case. And furthermore, it uses algorithmic super sampling, and it upscales with minimal overhead. This is you know, absolutely awesome. And I, again, I think it makes perfect sense given the nature of this tech going into consoles. So how I understood the technology, and I mentioned a couple of times in the videos at this point, was that I believed it was using a small amount of compute kind of at the end of the upsampling process. So yeah, he provides a lot more insight into how that actually works. I've of course recently said multiple times that I think this is going to be a kind of a linchpin of AMD's strategy going forward on the desktop and also like mobile devices because of course they do actually have that Fidelity FX which is work on the PlayStation, the Xbox and it just means that AMD's ecosystem is so darn huge you can kind of imagine that developers are just going to be able to run with this. And again, it does need to be enabled by developers. So it's not like an option you can just simply enable, like, I know, disabling VSync or something like that. A developer needs to go in and throw it into the game, but it doesn't seem super difficult to do. And again, I know I keep stressing this, but I just want to make certain you guys understand where I'm coming from. The fact that this is going to be a tech which is very similar anyway in its implementation to the PlayStation or the Xbox and the PC. It means that the potential number of users which can utilize this tech is incredible. And Microsoft have already really kind of discussed at length, you know, their plans to incorporate Fidelity FX tech uh, in Xbox titles. And we know the PlayStation could do the same from press releases and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the future holds here. This is not a doom and gloom for NVIDIA by any stretch of the imagination. They're going to really hammer DLSS tech, you know, over the next, you know, couple of months or even a year or two. But it's going to be very interesting to see how AMD are kickstarting this, particularly given I am hearing that the image quality is really good. And let's face it, it has to be to compete with something like NVIDIA's DLSS 2. And now we're going to mosey down the street to Intel XE. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know that I'm actually quite hyped to see what Intel brings to the table, mostly because I just want another competitor at this point in the market. And with all of the shortages that are going on, and honestly, you know, more competition equals lower pricing, very, for customers anyway. So I feel that at this point, this is just really a good advertisement that we need as much competition as possible. But that aside, 
There is a couple of very fascinating uh, updates which have emerged, mostly courtesy of Igor's lab, concerning the release and production schedule, as well as some stuff on the specification. So recently an Intel employee stated that these GPUs are right around the corner, but yeah, I mean, what really is right around the corner in terms of production cycle of chips? You know, most chips are three, four, five year journey from the initial planning stages up until the point where they, well, start to go into retail. And this is the tr truth, whether it's CPUs or an APU or, you know, a GPU, whatever. These things take a long time. They're a long journey. And yeah, so there is actually a couple of updates. So according to Igor's lab, the, we will start to see mass production of the lower end SKUs take place late October until uh, kind of mid-ish December. That's when mass production will really be kind of kicking off. And the higher performance SKUs, those are going to start entering mass production shortly thereafter. So we could basically say that mass production of Intel XD, giving you a TLDR, is going to begin kind of tail end of 2021. And what does this mean for you as someone who is like, I want an Intel graphics card? Well, good sir or madam, you're probably going to be, you know, not purchasing one until let's say late-ish Q1 next year, which... I'm okay with, frankly, I would rather the GPU launch a little later. I, I admit it's a bit frustrating, simply because, you know, I want the cards available now, if only from the geek perspective of wanting to try one out. But I would rather Intel launch a little later and get all of their ducks in the row. And one of the things I'm hearing about XD is that the silicon itself is in pretty good shape, and I'll get more into the specs in just a moment, but the drivers are kind of like, and the software around it is like where things are a little shaky at the moment. And Intel does have a really good team, but at the end of the day, their team isn't really used to optimizing around a GPU, which has got so many execution units. And obviously it is a slightly different architecture and a lot of other moving parts here. So I'm curious to see how Intel will do. I'm quite excited. Uh, to be honest, to see what is actually capable of. And yeah, Igor's lab has also leaked a ton of other details, which we'll get into in a moment. But perhaps most critically important for me is that these GPUs allegedly only have a 100 watt TDP. Now I stress that is for a mobile part, but this is for 512 execution units for the highest end SKU with 1100 megahertz for the base frequency and the boost frequency of 1.8 gigahertz, which, you know, isn't too bad at the end of the day. So we can imagine that a desktop derivative, which again, we can assume is gonna have higher clock frequencies, it might not be as greedy in power as perhaps some had feared. Um, and given these cards are going to feature things such as hardware-based ray tracing and stuff, you know, I'm okay with that. A GPU, which is, let's say RTX 3070, RTX 3080 level of performance, which I've leaked this multiple times at this point, and if it's a decent pricing, I'm okay, or to be honest with you, I think that that would be absolutely amazing for the market. However, getting to the specifications and specifics, uh, again, this is courtesy of several people, so I'll link all of this in the video description, but a lot of this comes to us via videocards.com as well as Igor's lab, so again, I'll link all of that in the description. Um, we are seeing the highest end SKU, as I just mentioned, 512 execution units, up to 1.8 gigahertz, uh, and this is with 16 megabytes of smart cache and also 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that's on a 256-bit bus, 16 GBPS. And then we go slightly lower down the SKU stack, 192-bit bus, five, uh, 384 execution units are running at 1.8 gigahertz. But yeah, it's it's I think it's quite a robust stack. But perhaps the thing I find most interesting is actually the diagrams that have been leaked, again, courtesy of Igor's lab. And one of the more, well, curious ones, to, at least in my mind, is the one that shows us the Tiger Lake H die, as well as the DG2. And you can see that there is a PCIe Gen 4 link between them, which makes sense. However, it's stating that it's times 12, which... I find particularly curious, and also in amongst all of these documents, it seems to indicate that we have HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 2.0. Now, it's hard to really be certain whether some of this stuff is a typo, like, for example, the number of uh, lanes, although it is possible, maybe it's because it's a mobile solution, so they don't feel they need those additional lanes. 
I honestly don't know. Um, however, it is of course worth noting that we don't exactly know what stage of design these documents are from. So things can, you know, there could even be a couple of potential designs and they end up going with scenario A or B rather than the opposite one. So, you know, a lot of internal testing or maybe it's for one derivative of the SKU. Um, but yeah, so long story short, Intel are very serious about their graphics. And so, you know, I've had so many mixed opinions from my sources regarding Intel XE. Uh, some of the people I've spoken to believe that, you know, it was going to be amazing. You know, I've already discussed the performance targets a couple of times now. And others told me, nope, they are hearing it's really not good. It's very power hungry. Um, it might not even be released, the gaming variant. And I've heard that from a couple of people. In fact, three people. So it was, it was kind of like this conflicting thing where I almost had as many people telling me it was not great versus the number of people that were good. And the only thing I can say on this is that I heard from one person, I can't of course confirm this, but I heard that there was an early design that, you know, kind of ended up getting changed or majorly adjusted. And then this is the variant they've gone with, but maybe it's just, you know, uh, it maybe it was like a specific engineering sample that wasn't going well and like a later revision did a lot better I honestly don't know what the story is behind it but TLDR right now it's looking like it could be a pretty good architecture I hope so because I think the market really needs it um I have to say I'm going to be curious to see what actually goes on here because obviously AMD are very well established at the moment with RDNA 2 I think that they're kind of coming back strong They've got a lot of work to do in terms of like mindshare, I think. NVIDIA obviously are just kind of smothering everyone in terms of mindshare. But Intel does have a lot of money and they have a lot of mindshare of their own. So I'll be very fascinated to see how they push, for example, uh, Intel uh, laptops, which have obviously uh, XC-based graphics. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that would be very curious to me on how marketing decisions will be made coming forward. And I think this is going to be something that we need to kind of watch out for, to be honest. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a like slash subscribe thing on the channel. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.